Welcome to the backside of 11.3. So here's the front side. You'll remember 11.3 areas of regular polygons. Of course, you know regular is equilateral and equiangular. So we are trying to figure out a way to be able to find the area, an easy way to find the area of this regular polygon. And what we did, you'll remember, is we have radii here and the angle between the radii is your central angle. You find the central angle by taking 360 divided by the number of sides. And then we have um, our little right triangle here and we pull that out. And you'll remember that this angle is half of, because this is your apothem, and this angle is half of your central uh, angle. And that will help us to be able to find the area of a regular polygon. So let me, rather than explaining it, let me go and jump into a specific one uh, here. And I think this might be easier for me to do it uh, this way. Well, let me cover up <coughs> some of the stuff here to help us to progress carefully one step at a time uh, through this. And so, remember like we said there in the uh, first, on the front side, that the perimeter for the area of a regular polygon, uh, the perimeter is n times s, where n is the number of sides and s is the length of sides. That's pretty simple, right? So for example here, we have uh, this side is seven, so in order to find the distance around it, all that I do is multiply it times, multiply seven times the number of sides. That's what this means. The perimeter equals the number of sides uh, times the length of each side. And then the area, here's the other formula that we have to rem remember, which is pretty simple. The area is one half the apothem, that's what the A is there, the apothem times the perimeter. Capital P is your perimeter. So maybe what I should do is put a little arrow uh, here to the A. And so A equals, or let's just write the word apothem. So apothem. So A is your apothem. Okay. <clears throat> so let's, what we want to do is find the length of the apothem and also the length of each side. Once we have the length of the apothem, the length of the apothem, and the length of a side, that's all that we need. Well, we also need the number of sides, but that's pretty easy to do. So in order to find the length of a side and also the length of a apothem, what we'll first do is find the central angle, find the measure from one radius to another, uh, the consecutive uh, radius. So the central angle is, remember, 360 divided by the number of sides. In this particular case, this is a hexagon, so n equals 5. So 360 divided by 5 is 72 degrees. Now let's take this, so this larger angle here is 72 degrees. But now let's take this right triangle, just the half of your central angle, and let's blow this thing up and bring it over here. So this is your apothem. Uh, that's the A is your apothem, and I did it uh, blue just like the, the front side. And they're telling us that that is 6.5. And then let's also uh, draw the radius, and the radius they're telling us is 8. And then this is half of the side. So notice the side length, the S, is this entire side, but I'm just taking this little half part of it. And so let's call that x. So this length here is x, and that is half of the side. So there are my three sides for this right triangle. Remember the apothem goes from the center of this, the regular polygon to the midpoint of the side, and it's at a perpendicular distance. So this is a right triangle. So that's pretty cool. They, they're giving me, in this case, they're giving me the apothem and also the uh, uh, radius. And just looking at this one particular uh, right triangle, remember once you identify it as a right triangle, draw your little arrow across from the right angle will be your hypotenuse. 
and let's do our trig on this 36 degree. So we will always, you could do it on this angle over here, but let's just keep it simple and keep the same pattern. So let's do the trig on this uh, angle, which is 36. Remember we got that because that is half of your central angle, uh, 72. So if we do trig on this 36 degree angle, then uh, this side over here is opposite of your uh, angle. And then this side is going to be your adjacent. Let me go ahead and label that as your adjacent. So even though we already have that, let's just identify that as your adjacent. So how would I find the length of the opposite side? That's what I want. I want to know what the length of the side is. So once I find x, then I'll multiply that times 2 to be able to find the length of the side. So how do I find x? Well, what do I have? I have the hypotenuse and I want the opposite. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? And it's sine. So we'll take the sine of 36 equals the length of the opposite side, which is x, uh, over the length of the hypotenuse, which is 8. And you might be thinking, hey, you could have used tangent, and I agree. I could have used uh, opposite and adjacent, and that would be the tangent. And so the tangent of 36 would equal x over 6.5. And if you did that, you would get the same answer. But I'm just doing sine because that's what people are, are typically more familiar with is uh, sine. So the sine of 36 equals x over 8. And now I want to, here's my equation. And I want to solve this now for, let's turn my light on. There you go. Um, and I want to solve for x. So multiply both sides times 8. The 8 cancels out, and I'm left with x equals 8 times the sine of 36. There it is. Uh, x equals 8 times the sine of 36. And now I could plug that into my calculator and solve that uh, value, or find that value of x. But what I would need to do is then uh, round that number and chop it off, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to deform these numbers, so let's preserve uh, that number of the x as much as possible. So do not plug this in your calculator yet. But remember I said that we're looking for the length of the side because we need that for this uh, formula to find the perimeter. And then once we find the perimeter, we use that to be able to find the length or the, the area of your regular polygon. So to find s, uh, the length uh, of the side, it's equal to two times the length of x. I could put down here a little small x if you wanted to. Just to know that that's this length here. So 2 times x and so 2 times now we know that x is uh, 8 times the sine of 36. So now I know what s is. It's e equal to uh, in this case uh, 2 times 8 is 16 times the sine of 36. And now that I know what s is I can plug that into the formula for the perimeter. So remember perimeter equals n times s. So I plug in what I know of s. s is 16 sine uh, 36. Bring that down here. And n is the number of sides. There are five sides in this hexagon. Hexagon, no, pentagon, there you go. In this pentagon. So now I know what the perimeter uh, is. So if I wanted to calculate the perimeter, uh, it would be 40, approximately 47.0. That would be if I rounded it off. But let's not do that. Let's not round off uh, and find the perimeter. Let's just take this entire number here, 5 times 16 sine of 36, and bring this whole thing over here into our formula of the area equals 1 half times the apothem times the perimeter. And when I plug in my apothem length, remember I was told that from the original diagram, my apothem length is 6.5. And then I also uh, plug in what I know is the perimeter, which is 5 times 16 sine of 36. And yes, it is true that I could multiply 5 times 16 and what would that be, 80? I could say 80 times the sine of 36 if I wanted to, but I'm just, uh, I ran out of space in the bottom here, so I'm just bringing this whole thing over here. And then, so here's my 
equation now, or my solution, or my final formula, I'd say it. So the area equals one half, and this is my apothem, 6.5 times, and this is my perimeter here, five times 16 times sine of 36. And so this is the number that you want to plug into your calculator, okay? So don't deform a number and then use that poor deformed number in your next equation because you will get an even more deformed answer. So in order to make sure that, because you don't want to get 152.7 and you did everything right except for you used a deformed number. So if the answer is 152.8, that's the answer that you want to get. So make sure that you don't use the calculator until the very end uh, here. So if you were plugged that into your calculator, uh, then you would get uh, a number, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but if you rounded it off uh, to the nearest tenth, it'd be 152.8. So here, this is the um, keystrokes to be able to find this, uh, the perimeter uh, here. So remember how we do the sign? We say five times 16 and then times, and then we would enter in 36 and then hit push the sign button. And when you push the sign button, it gives you the sign of 36, but you want this entire thing, so you hit equals. So up here, what you really wanna do, and I probably should have done that, huh? Yeah, I probably should have, but you know how to do this. Uh, one half, you could either say one divided by two, or you could say 0 0.5 times 6.5 times, and then do the rest of this, uh, the keystrokes that are listed uh, here. And then if you had equal at the very end, you should get uh, that the area is approximately, well, it'll give you the exact number of course, but once you round it to the nearest tenth, it'll be approximately point. Uh, Eight. Okay, so you can see that's a lot, huh? But hopefully, once you start to do this a couple of times, I'll do it two more times with you. You'll you'll see the flow of what how to do this. But there are uh, different types of information that they will give you. So here on this one, the only thing they give to us is just the length of a side. That's all they give us, and we have to figure out the area from this. Can you do that? And the answer is yes. You have the tools to be able to figure out the area when all that you know is that this is a regular polygon and the length of one side is seven. Wow, you're pretty amazing to be able to figure this out. <laughs> so let's start out with a perimeter. Uh, no, no, no. Let's start out with, uh, uh, first of all, uh, finding the central angle. So we always find the central angle first. And how do we find the central angle? Here it is there. Um, actually, let's start out with perimeter because that's the easiest thing, right? Because we know that this is the formula that we're aiming towards. We want area equals one half the apothem times the perimeter. You're aiming for uh, those two things. So this is easy for us to find what the perimeter uh, is of this. One of the sides is seven. And so the perimeter equals the number of sides times the length of one side. And let's count this up. And be careful when you count it up. Wouldn't that be a bummer if you counted the number of sides wrong and you said like there was 11 sides instead of 10 and everything else was right, but you got that one wrong. So be careful. What I normally do is put tick marks or at least, at least hold my finger there. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Man, that's probably good. Hold your finger there on the first one and then count them around. So there are 10 sides. And you multiply it times each side is the length of seven. So 10 times seven is 70. So now I have uh, half of my formula. I know the perimeter, but now I need the apothem. I need the apothem. So to get the apothem, you first get the central angle. And you will always have to get the central angle when finding the measure of, or finding the area of these regular polygons. So let's draw. Remember central angle is uh, the, the angle between two consecutive radii. So remember a radii goes from the center to a vertex, and here's another, the next uh, radii is the center to the next vertex. And central angle is 360 divided by N. In this case, our N is 10. So 360 divided by 10 is 36. 
And then I want to find, so now I, I blow up this uh, half of this central angle and bring it down here. So draw a big right triangle. Don't worry about the proportions of it. You know, just draw me a right triangle and then go from there. And we know that the central angle is 36. I'm going to put a circle around that. And so therefore, the measure of this uh, smaller, I can't really say smaller because sometimes it'll be bigger, but the measure of this uh, angle um, in the center <laughs> of the, it's not the central angle, central angle is 36, but the, the angle that's whose vertex, who has a vertex or whose vertex is on the center, I don't know how you want to say this, but the, there it is, the angle between, there it is, the angle between the apothem and the radius. Okay, so thank you for persevering with me as I struggle with my academic language and trying to figure out how to say it better. But the angle between the apothem and the next radius is one half of the central angle. So the central angle is 36, divide that by two, and you get 18. So I can plug in my 18 as the angle between the apothem and the radius. I gotta repeat that so I don't forget that phrase now that I've forged that thing out and hammered it. Uh, hopefully it makes sense to you. So what do I know about this triangle? Well, I know that the length of a side is uh, seven. So I take this seven and divide it by two. That gives me 3.5. So I know this length is 3.5. And I do not know what the radius is. And what I want is the apothem. I want that apothem so I can plug that into my formula here. Okay, so I only have one, the length of one side, and I do have the length of an, or not the length, but the measure of an angle. So let's put a circle around this 18. Let's do trig on this uh, angle of 18. I know that this is a, I should have drawn it. What's wrong, man? You forgot to draw the angle. I don't have the pin with me. So let's go ahead and draw. This is my right angle across from the right angle. This is my hypotenuse. And in reference to this angle of 18, this is the adjacent side. And across from the 18 degree angle, this is the opposite side. So I have, what do I have? I have the opposite. I have the opposite side. And I want the adjacent side. So what, trig what trigonomic function, what trig function, uses opposite and adjacent? And you are right, it is tangent. So the tangent of 18 equals opposite, which is 35 or 3.5. Don't forget that decimal, man. That'll mess me up if I if I forget the decimal. So 3.5 uh, over. So that's opposite over adjacent. So my adjacent is a. So now I want to solve for a. So how do I get a out of the denominator? How do I clear the, my denominator? Well, I do that by multiplying both sides by a. And when I do, that clears a divided by a is one. So that clears, turns into an invisible one. So I cancel out the a's there. And so now I have a times the tangent of 18 equals 3.5. And now I wanna solve for a. So how do I move this uh, tangent 18 over to the right-hand side? I divide both sides by the tangent of 18 because these are connected through multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. And so on the left-hand side, tangent of 18 divided by the tangent of 18 is one. So this cancels out, turns into an invisible one. And on the right-hand side, I have 3.5 divided by the tangent of 18. So there is my apothem. And let's put a circle around that guy. What's wrong with my lead? It must have cheap lead, or maybe it's smaller than, narrower than what it's, has a, a smaller diameter than what it's supposed to. So my apothem is equal to 3.5 divided by the tangent of 18. If I was to calculate that, I would get approximately 10.8, but don't, <laughs> don't calculate that. So ignore that number. And let's just keep it as uh, the perfect number. The apothem is 3.5 divided by the tangent of 18. And now here's my formula that I wanna plug into. Area equals one half the apothem times perimeter. And so here's my, the same formula down here. So what do I know? Well, bring down the one half. I know the apothem is 3.5 divided by the tangent of 18. And I also know the perimeter, like we figured out before, uh, is 70. 
So here is...